मैं एक सौ मत ग्रैब दिया था दे हरे ब्रो क्रीचर्स The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim is a large game with vast landscapes to explore, deep dungeons to delve into, and many activities to complete. As you venture across the frozen Nordic province though, you'll no doubt pick up flowers, roots, and fleshy samples off of your enemies, all of which serve a purpose in alchemy. In The Elder Scrolls, alchemy is the means by which you combine various ingredients to create potions and poisons to aid you in all manner of activity. In this guide, we'll cover some of the more helpful potions you can distill from the various flora and fauna. If you're looking for a guide over both unique and deadly poisons, though, then don't worry, as there's an entire separate video over that. Anyway, before we can get to actually brewing helpful drafts, there are a few things in Skyrim that both directly and indirectly affect alchemy that are worth covering. The first thing to address in regards to alchemy is that you can only do your mixing at an alchemy station. These chemistry tables are located in all cities and some towns, inside of apothecaries, the chambers of the local court mage, and occasionally in an inn, as well as either coming with or being an upgrade you can purchase for any of the houses you can own. When it comes to ingredients, almost everything you'll use regularly is plant-based and has one or several locations to regularly harvest from, which means if you farm the same area over and over, you'll run headlong into respawn mechanics. In Skyrim, for a plant to respawn after you pick it, you must leave the area and not return for 240 hours, or 10 days. That's in-game time, by the way. If you're harvesting things from inside of a dungeon, though, the rules are a bit different. The 10-day rule still applies if you don't clear the dungeon. However, if you do clear the dungeon by killing the boss, it takes not 10, but 30 in-game days for the instance to reset. This encourages you to have multiple locations to harvest ingredients from, as just using one place doesn't really work all that well. There's also a similar rule for how frequently shops and by extension apothecaries restock. It takes a full 48 hours or two in-game days for any vendor's stock to resupply. Even further related to this is the Hearthfire expansion, which can be bought separately but comes built into the ultimate Game of the Year and Special Editions of Skyrim. In Hearthfire you can build your own house, and it's possible to have an outside garden and an inside greenhouse. In both places you can grow nearly all plant type ingredients, and after harvest it takes three in-game days before the plants will yield another sample. Any seeds put in a planter will grow initially in one day though, which makes it possible, though a bit tedious, to exploit a greenhouse if you use a perk from the alchemy tree called Green Thumb. On the note of perks though, everything in the alchemy tree is pretty self-explanatory, but the most valued perks for creating potions, aside of the multiple levels of alchemist, are Physician, Benefactor, and Purity. Whether or not you take any of these perks though is entirely up to you. Anyway, with all of that covered, let's move on to the list of potions and what you'll need to make them. We'll start the list off with a less common but fun little potion that grants invisibility. As you may imagine, this potion makes you visually undetectable for as long as it lasts, making it useful for both thieves and anyone needing to disappear. The ingredients that carry this effect are fairly rare, but the easier ones to acquire begin with Charis Egg. Charis Eggs are harvested from Charis spawning pods, found deep in caves and Dwemer ruins, as Falmer tame the creatures that lay them. One of the better locations to collect these eggs in mass, though, is a place called Chill Wind Depths, a cave located south of Dragon Bridge and west of Morthal. Keep this cave in mind, as it's also the best place in Skyrim to collect any manner of mushroom you could possibly need. The next ingredient with invisibility is Luna Moth Wings, which come from the Luna Moths that spawn in the warmer, more forested areas of Skyrim between 8 and 11 p.m. There are really no rock-solid locations where you're certain to find these fluttering little moths, but a good location you could check is Bloated Man's Grotto, a cave north of Falkreath on the edge of Lake Illinalta. The last, somewhat easy component to find, is Nernroot. This noisy, glowing root is most commonly found sprouting in shade and along the edge of water, meaning you're bound to find it by following any river, lake, or coast. However, there's also the Serethi Farm, located in the Rift, halfway between Riften and Iverstead. 
This little plot of land is tended by farmers who actually know how to grow the rare root, making it a perfect place to revisit every 10 days. Now, before moving on, there's a particular conflict of ingredients to be aware of. Luna moth wings and charis eggs, when combined, will not only yield invisibility, but also an effect of damage magic, which reduces your maximum magicka for a time. Not a problem for everyone, but something to keep in mind when you hit an alchemy table intending to use these components. Moving along, the second unorthodox elixir to brew is Resist Magic. Resist Magic is pretty simple, as it flatly reduces any magic-based damage by a direct percentage, with the effect capped at 85%. You can easily make a potion with this effect by searching for the four following ingredients. First, and just because it was recently mentioned, is Nernroot, that grows in shade and near water, as well as at the Serethi farm. Second is Bleeding Crown, a mushroom that grows in many caves across Skyrim, but is mostly concentrated in the previously mentioned location, Chillwind Depths. Third and fourth are far more common, being Tundra Cotton and Lavender. Both are easy to spot and gather in quantity too, as they grow abundantly on the plains of Whiterun Hold, right up to the city walls. You can even find them both growing inside of Whiterun. And, for what it's worth, Lavender sprouts in decent quantity just outside of Chillwind Depths. For all of these reasons, crafting Resist Magicka potions can be a great way to also make easy money at the game's outset. Next up, we'll cover a more basic but valuable concoction, Restore Stamina. The Restore Stamina effect is simple and forward, restoring X amount of fatigue instantly and upon downing the elixir. The easy-to-find alchemical components that carry this effect starts with Purple Mountain Flowers, a notably common flora that covers the entire map. All you have to literally do to find these things is follow any paved road and you'll eventually see them growing along the path. Another component is Mud Crab Chitin, or the shells of mud crabs who live along the edge of nearly any body of water. A particularly good place to look for these creatures is the swamp in Hail March between Solitude and Morthal, as it's full of the shallow water the horrible little creatures call home. There's also the small hovering torch bug, which spawns between 8 and 11 p.m. in a multitude of locations across Skyrim. These insects are also found in the Hail March Swamp around the Apprentice Stone. And if that's not enough, you can also check inside of Bloated Man's Grotto, north of Falkreath. The last Restore Fatigue component is the Orange Dart Wing, which, like the Torch Bug, spawns in the Hail March Swamp. The cause for this is how the Orange Dart Wing is most commonly found hovering over any lake or large inland body of water, but keep in mind that they can be difficult to spot. Now, for ingredient conflicts, when mixing these ancillary components, you need to avoid combining purple mountain flowers and torch bugs, as when these two parts are combined, it will yield an extra negative effect of Linger Damage Magicka, which is a poison effect that burns over time and not something you'd want in a potion. The natural follow-up to stamina is Magicka, and the potion of Restore Magicka. Just as the name implies, a potion of Restore Magicka flatly restores X amount of Magicka instantly and as soon as you press the bottle to your lips. To concentrate this effect, you'll want to start by collecting the common Red Mountain Flower. Finding these is easy to do, as you'll be hard-pressed to not see them when moving in any direction in Skyrim. Seriously, just follow a road. There's also the White Cap, which is a pure white mushroom found in many caves across the province. And because it's a mushroom, you'll find plenty in the already mentioned cave, Chillwind Depths. On the coattails of one fungus comes another, called Moritapinella. This shroom is found commonly growing on stumps and fallen logs in forested areas, with the land around Riverwood having plenty. On the exact opposite side of fungus, though, is the grass pod, which is found growing in abundance across the northern coast of Skyrim, along the Sea of Ghosts. The grass pod is harvested from spiky grass, and the best way to find a multitude of samples is to just follow the coast north and west of Solitude. Admittedly a large area, but much better than wandering the entire coast of Skyrim. The last easily found ingredient is Creep Cluster. Creep Cluster is a strange red root growing all over East March, a hot spring and geyser covered area located south of Windhelm and north of Riften. Now, before moving on, take caution when brewing Restore Magicka potions to never combine red mountain flowers 
white caps, or grass pods, as all three of these alchemical components will yield a Ravage Magicka effect, which doesn't just damage Magicka, but reduces your maximum Magicka, which is clearly an effect you don't want since it reduces the exact thing you're trying to restore. Finally, we reach the end of the alchemy list with the incredibly valuable Restore Health Potion. Just like the Stamina and Magicka potions, the Restore Health Potion works instantly, giving you X amount of health as soon as you imbibe the solution. The ingredients for this concoction start with blue mountain flowers, which, like the red and purple variations, grow everywhere in Skyrim. Just explore or follow a road to find some, and you won't be disappointed. The second easy-to-find component is the Swamp Fungal Pod, which grows in the overly mentioned Hailmarch Swamp. Another easy-to-find element is wheat. Yes, the simple stack of hay growing on many farms across Skyrim. Finding any farm will almost always yield wheat, but the farms in Rorikstead have the largest crops to raid. If that's not enough, though, be certain to check the plots outside of Whiterun, Windhelm, Markarth, and Riften. Now, the final ingredient is butterfly wings, specifically the ones from the large orange monarchs that flutter around the southern, non-snowy regions of the map. These insects spawn during daylight hours, from 6am to 6pm, and while there are no guaranteed locations to find them, you could try looking inside of the now frequently mentioned Bloated Man's Grotto north of Falkreath. With this last mention of the grotto though, it's worth pointing out that because insects and the like only spawn at certain hours of the day, they don't follow normal respawn mechanics. This means if you do exhaust the grotto or any other good insect harvesting location, you can return the very next day or night to capture more buzzing or fluttering bugs. One last thing to mention about these ingredients is to avoid combining wheat and swamp fungal pods, as when mixed they will yield a negative effect of lingering damage magicka, an effect that burns away magicka over time. If you're not a mage and don't cast spells, it won't mean much, but all the same, it's an effect worth being aware of. Though there are more potions and elixirs you can brew in Skyrim, at least one of the five covered here will likely help you in some way, no matter your playstyle. And don't forget that experimentation is king in alchemy, so don't be afraid to suss out your own favored concoctions. However, if you're more interested in poisoning your enemies for any number of devious results, then don't worry. In the companion guide to this video, we'll look at common, unique, and strange toxins you can distill to coat the tip of your blades with. Until next time, though, I'm William Strife, and this was the Skyrim Alchemy Potion Guide. I'll see you later.